This video is going to talk about graphs and equations. Remember that the first row in the coordinate pair is the number of the column. I like to call that the run. And the second number is the number of the row. I like to call that the jump. Remember that I think about a video, a two-dimensional video game character running along the line and then jumping up or falling down. Whoops. So we have here a number of coordinates on that we can identify on this chart. Excuse me, it might be a little bit difficult to see, so I'm going to zoom in here. What they want us to do is they want us to identify some of the points on this chart. So, for example, I see a point right here, and this is 1, 1. Hi. The next point that I see that's easy to identify is run 2, jump 3. The next point after that, on the 3 line, is run 3, jump 5. And then after that, I can follow the 4 up for run 4, jump 7. Now, there are ways that I can, because this is on a completely straight line, I can look for a pattern here. Remember that each of these, the first number is always the x coordinate because it's on, you run along the x line to figure out where it lines up with. The second number is the y coordinate, because that tells you where it lines up with here. So there are ways that I can predict what the next number will be based on looking for a pattern. So if I want to know what will the if I want to figure out what the second number would be based on knowing the first number, let's say um, they had it down below a little bit. Let's say that the first number is 11, and I want to figure out what that second number is. I want to figure out what that y is going to equal by knowing what the x is. I might look for a pattern in these numbers. And I see 1, 1, 2 to 3... 3 to 5, 4 to 7. And what I notice is that each of these numbers is at least the same as, but almost all of them are bigger. So I'm going to have to do something to make the number bigger. I can try adding or I can try multiplying. Well, adding seems like I'm going to be adding a different number each time. Plus 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. That's not, it's a pattern, but it's not the pattern I'm looking for because it's not one number consistently. I can also see that if I double each of these first numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, if I take that x number and I double it, I get close to the next number. 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8. I in fact get so close to it that I'm 1 over. So I can double this first number and then subtract 1. 8 minus 1 is 7, 6 minus 5, 1 is 5, 4 minus 1 is 3, 2 minus 1 is 2. So now now that I have that formula, if I, that would have been easier to do with a whole class, so I apologize about that. If I want to say, well, what happens when x is 11, then I'm going to replace x with 11 and bring down everything else. y equals 2 times 11. What's 2 times 11? Well, that's 22 minus 1. 22 minus 1 is 21. So this number will end up being 21. I could also double check this. Remember how we were adding one each time, adding two each time? I might also see that this side's going up by one every time, and this side is going up by two every time. This is every odd number. So I could count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, all the way up to 11. And just to double check, I'm going to count by odd numbers to make sure I get up to 21. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21. We could also figure out by using that formula that we wrote before, 2x minus 1, we could figure out what happens if the first coordinate is 100. We could plug in 100 for x and rewrite everything else. 2 times 100 is 200 minus 1. That would be 199. So when our first number is 100, our second number would be 199. And that's a lot to run. That's a lot to jump. They want us to make a t-table and graph the rule multiply by 2 and add 3. Well, I know that multiply by 2 would be 2x and add 3, I would put a plus 3 after it. So I want to make an xy chart. Now I'm going to run out of room real quick here if I'm not careful. So I'm actually going to talk through this a little bit. I'm going to try to keep all the work off to one side while also keeping my face here. So if I have 2x, if x is 1, that's going to be 2 times 1 plus 3. And 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 is going to be 5. So when x is 1, y is 5. What about when x is 2? Well, that's 2 times 2 plus 3. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7. So when x is 2, y is 7. What about when x is 3 just for one more? Well, that's 2 times 3 plus 3. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9. So in order to plot this, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to put the table right here. The coordinate grid would continue on like this. Here's my origin. 1, 5, I would run 1 and jump 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2, 7, I would run 2 and jump 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 3, 9, I would run 1, 2, 3 and jump 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And you can see that I'm creating almost a perfect line here. It would be a perfect line if I wasn't, you know, on the computer like I am now. So now what they want us to do is they want us to mark four points on this line segment. Well, I can see 0, 0 on there. That would be 1. I can also see 1, 1. 3. So I'm going to go ahead and put 1, 3. I can see 2, 6. And I can see 3, 9. Now, what if I want to figure out what 4 is? Well, I'm going to go ahead and look for this formula. Remember that we remember input as x and output as y. So because we made this into a t-table, this was run 1, jump 3. 1, 3. To figure out the formula, what's going on with the x to get the y? So to get the y, I'm going to take whatever the x is, and I'm going to multiply it by 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 would equal 12. So if I were to continue this out, that other point would be at the 12. I hope the rest of the, your day is as amazing as you are.